So what are the ways this war can end, do you think? What are the different possible trajectories, whether it's peace talks, what does winning look like for either side? What is the role of US? What, what trajectories do you see that are possible? It's, it's a question on the one level, very easy to answer, on the other, very difficult. The level on which it is very easy, it's, it's a broad historical perspective. If you really believe, and I believe in that, that this is the war of the Soviet succession, that this is the war of the disintegration of empire, we know how the story ends. And they end with disintegration of empire. They end with the rise of the new states and the appearance of the new colored spots on the map. That's the story that started with the American Revolution. So that's that's long-term perspective. The difficult part is, of course, what will happen tomorrow. The difficult part is what what they will be in 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 two days and or even in two years. And um, in very broad terms, the the war can end in one of three scenarios: the victory of one side, the victory of another side, and a sort of a stale, stalemate and compromise, especially when it comes when it comes to the territories. This war is already approaching the end of the second year. I follow the, the news and look analysis. I don't remember one single piece suggesting that the next year will will bring peace, or will bring peace for sure. And uh, we we are in a, in a situation where uh, the uh, both sides still believe that they can achieve something or improve their position on the battlefield. Certainly, that was the expectations of uh, Ukrainian side uh, back in the in the in the summer and and early fall of 2023. And from what I understand now, this is certainly the expectations of the Russian side today. This is this is the largest war in Europe since World War II, the largest war in the world since Korean War, and uh, we know that that the the uh, Korean War ended in this division division of Korea, but the negotiations were going on for more than two years. While those negotiations were going on, both sides were trying to improve their position there, and until. There was a political change, death of Stalin, arrival of Eisenhower in the United States, and the realization that the, the, the chances of succeeding on the battlefield are huge, the peace talks didn't come. So at this point, all three scenarios are possible. I don't I don't really discount any of them. It's early early to to say what will happen. So without any political change. Let's try to imagine what are the possibilities that the war ends this year. Is it possible that it can end with compromise basically at the place it started? Meaning back to the borders of 2022? Yeah, back to the borders of 22 with some security guarantees that aren't really guarantees but are hopeful guarantees. Uh, no, it's it's, it's it, it is not just virtual impossibility. It is impossible without political change in Moscow. The reason is that back in the fall of 2022, uh, Vladimir Putin included five of Ukrainian regions, oblasts, even those that he didn't control or didn't control fully into the Russian constitution which basically, in simple language, is that the hands are tied up not only for Putin himself, but also for his possible successors. So that means that no return to the borders of 2022 without without change, political change in Moscow are possible. Um, um, a few days after after that that that, that decision in Moscow, uh, Zelensky uh, issued a decree uh, saying that no negotiations with Russia. What what that really meant in plain language is that basically we are not prepared to negotiate a stable agreement with five of our oblasts, 
uh, not just annexed, but also included into the Russian constitution. So that's where we are. So the, 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 that, that scenario is, is uh, again, everything is possible, of course, but it's highly, highly unlikely. So the Russian constitution is a, is a thing that's very that makes this all very difficult. Yes, and not only as a negotiation tactic for Putin or whoever would, would negotiate on the Russian side, but also as, as a legal issue. So like the, the practical aspect of it even is difficult. Yes, you really have to uh, change the constitution before the peace agreement takes hold or immediately after that. And with the Minsk agreements, that was one of the things that uh, Russia wanted from Ukraine, change of the constitution. And it turned out to be really impossible. So that, that that's one of the one of the backstories of the of the Minsk and, and collapse of the Minsk agreements. Is there something like Min- Minsk agreements that are possible now to maybe this is a legal question, but to override the constitution to sort of shake everything up? So see the constitutional amendment as a uh, as just a negotiation tactic to to come to the table to something like Min- Minsk agreement. Given uh, how how fast those those amendments to the constitution were adopted, uh, th- that suggests that really executive power in in Russia has enormous power over the the legislative branch. Mm-hmm. So it's it's again difficult to imagine, but technically this is possible again yeah. if if the but but uh, possible if there is a political change in Moscow. I don't understand why assuming political change in Moscow is not possible this year. So I'm trying to see if there's a way to end this war this year, right? There is a possibility of armistice, right? Mm-hmm. But armistice more along the uh, like any armistice along the lines of the current front lines. But withdrawal of the Russian troops to the borders of 2022 at this point, whether it's reasonable or unreasonable, can be achieved all only as the result of the uh, defeat of the Russian army, like it happened near Kiev. Is it possible? Possible. Is it uh, likely, especially given what is happening with the Western support, military support for, for, for Ukraine? Probably not. But if Putin, the executive branch, has a lot of power, why can't the United States president, the Russian president, the Ukrainian president come to the table and draw up something like the Minsk agreements where, and then rapid constitutional change is made and you go back to the borders in 2022, before 2022, like through agreements, through compromise, impossible for you. Certainly not this year. I look at this year as the time when at least one side, Russian side, will try to get as much as it can through the through military means. But that's been happening last year too. There's been a counteroffensive. There's been attempts. There's been. It doesn't mean that uh, every that New Year somehow is supposed to bring new tactics. Uh, that the the last year was uh, pretty much a, a lot of fighting, a lot of suffering. Very little movement of the of the front line. The biggest change of the last year was Ukraine victory on the on the Black Sea, where they pushed the the Russian navy into the western part of the pond, and restored the the grain corridor and export from Odessa, apparently up to seventy five percent of what it used to be before the war. So that's. That's the the only um, major change, but again, the, the the price is enormous in terms of wealth, in terms of especially in terms of lives.